into the screen. So for this session, we're going to work through the eight silk brocades, which is an ancient um, Qigong practice, and it's primarily a medical form of Qigong. So let's start ourselves in standing wuji stance. And we're going to start this practice um, just with a little bit of shaking which is not the silk brocades, it's just I want to have a little bit of a shake up of energy first. So we don't go like this, right, the twist and the shake. I just want you to imagine that the earth is tremoring underneath your feet. And we call this wild horse shaking. Again, it just releases any tightnesses, any tensions, anything that's stuck. So we're literally just shaking the body, but from the feet. And let that shake just emanate right through the body. Interestingly, when we go into a traumatic situation, the body shakes. It shakes out that trauma. When an animal has had a traumatic experience, it goes into this incredible shake shaking action and then it's 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 trauma's gone and then we're going to release and just sigh <sighs> wow so we're ready to start the eight silk brocades and the first one is two hands support the heavens for the triple heater. So it's like this. We're going to inhale, bringing the hands upwards and interlacing the fingers at the level of the forehead, turning the palms up towards the sky and then looking up, reaching the Palms of the hands as high up as you can so the arms straighten. And then you exhale, you bring them down, turn them at the height of the forehead and bring them back down. So we're gonna do three of those. And it's up to you, as you extend the hands up, if you want to, you can lift into your toes and look up, but that's quite a lot going on. And if you don't feel ready to do that, just stay on your feet. So we're going to take three of those, raising the hands to support the hands, support the heavens for the triple heater. OK, knees are soft, tailbones tuck. Let's inhale. Bringing the energy up from the lower dantian, interlacing the fingers at the forehead, turning the palms up towards the sky, towards the heavens, and looking up. Stretching the body to full extension. Still keeping a softness in the knee so you're not overextending the joints. Inhale back, turn the hands. And exhale slowly back to lower dantian, keeping your wuji stance. Again, inhale, bringing that energy up, interlacing the hands at the forehead. Exhale, straightening the arms, palms reach towards the sky. Inhale back. So we're not rushing the breath. This is working with the triple heater, which is one of the organs we recognize in Chinese medicine, which relates to the heart and the heating system that is in our body. We've got lower heater, middle heater, upper heater. So again, last one, inhale. Interlace the hands at the forehead, exhale, 
Maybe you want to try to lift up into the toes. Inhale, lowering yourself slowly. And exhale. Second of the eight silk brocades is we're going to stand in horse stance. So I just want to check a few things with horse stance. Notice my knees are over my ankles. You can see my ankles there. If you can get that wide, for your knees to be over your ankles, make sure tailbone isn't sticking out because there's a tendency to then stick tailbone out. Back is straight. And if, if that's intense, don't go down quite so low. Whoops, find your balance. The feet, okay, if you haven't done this before, if I'm thinking of my toes pointing forwards, I want them 45 degrees out. So the angle between my heels would be 90. Now we're going to raise the hands to condition the stomach and the spleen. So we're working with the earth element. I've got one hand at the ear level, one hand at the ribs level. And then I'm going to push away. So my top hand pushes up to heaven, bottom hand pushes to earth. We inhale, swap them around. And we exhale. I can't see my top hand, but you can see my feet. Inhale. It was quite strong on the inner thighs. Hand to the ear, to the lower ribs. Exhale, push away. Tailbone tucks. Inhale. Exhale. Stomach and the spleen work together. And the energy lines run up uh, down the sides of the body. So they're getting a good stimulation to open up anything that's a little bit stuck or stagnant. We want our energy to be able to flow freely. Let the tailbone stick out. We inhale as we rotate the hands, level with the ear, level with the lower ribs. Make sure the top palm pushes up to sky, the bottom palm down to earth. Keep the knees over the ankles and the tailbone tucked. Now you could say the arms are pretty straight, but they're not overextended straight. Raising the hands to condition the spleen and the stomach. So it helps to tone the arms, it helps to tone the wrists and the core of the body. And helps us feel a little bit more nurtured and nurturing. And that stronger sense of belonging, that's where we uh, use the earth element to feel that stronger sense of belonging have you had enough so think of this as smooth transitions in our life smooth transitions as you move raising the hands to condition the stomach and the spleen i'm really enjoying it but we'll come to an end in a moment. Let's do one more each side. <laughs> Smooth transitions in life. How about that? And release. I'm going to let you stand for a moment. Take hold of the dominant wrist with the non-dominant hand and just have a little 
sweet circle on those hips. So the first one, hands support the heavens, was working with the triple heater, which is the heart, uh, works with the heart, triple heater and pericardium work with the heart. That one was the stomach and the spleen. The next one we're gonna work with is, is liver, the liver organ, the liver and the gallbladder work together. And the um, sense organ of the liver is the eyes. You know that if you've got liver problems, the eyes can become yellowy. And basically our eyes are, are responsible for clear vision and a clear sense of purpose in life, gone back into horse. And, um, you know, knowing what we want. There's a position I want you to take with your thumb and your index finger, because that is going to be our aim for our arrow, because we're going to draw an arrow, opening the bow and letting the arrow fly. So, legs are straight, elbows up to shoulder height. As you might want to watch this if you haven't done it. I'm going to send my right hand out. I'm going to have my hands like this as I draw the bow across my chest. And I'm looking between the index finger and the thumb where there's that right angle position. So here's my bow to release the arrow. And this is where I'm sending my arrow very clear direction, inhale. That gives your legs a rest. And then you take the bow and arrow to the left. So you only go as low as you feel comfortable and draw the bow across your sternum, across your heart, inhale. Elbows come up to sh shoulder height, exhale. Look, clear vision. So you're sending your arrow in the right direction, strengthening the arms, the hands, the inner thighs, exhale. And giving us that sense of, you know, purpose. Where are we aiming in life? Where are we aiming our arrows in life? Are they aimless? Inhale. So this is called opening the bow to let the arrow fly. Inhale. Working with the liver and gallbladder for a sense of a strong purpose and focus. A couple of tough ones on the legs following each other. It's quite hard to get that thumb and index finger into that position where you're aiming your bow. So it's a good stretch on the wrists, the fingers, the arms. Whoa. Clearing out any doubts about where you're heading. Couple more. Strong focus. Strong intention, clear intention, clear focus. And keep that elbow up. And release. Whew. So the legs have had a little bit of work. So this one we've done before. And it's a little bit like the wise owl turns its head to eliminate fatigue. And I love the, the, the names, the, you know, the geeky names they give to these. Looking backwards to eliminate five fatigues and seven illnesses. You're gonna exhale as you look over your shoulder. Starting with the thumbs in, done this before, knees are soft. Take an inhale, 
and then exhale, turn the thumbs right out. Look over the right shoulder, as far back as you can. The owl can turn its head. The wise owl can turn its head. Inhale back, exhale over the left. Inhale back, exhale. So I want five on each side. Keep the fingers spread wide. Inhale back, exhale, soft knees, tailbone tucks. See how much rotation you've got in your neck because the neck can get very tight. Looking at a screen. Inhale and exhale. So this is hydrating the neck and the joints. Prevents brittleness in the joints around the neck. Lots of little joints make up your neck. And where the spine connects with the skull. So just turning. Also releases tension through the shoulders. We've got one more, I think. Exhale, turn, inhale back. And really important you turn the thumbs right out. So I'm turning them as far back as I can because this is working the tendons in the arms, wrists, fingers from the shoulders. And it's a lovely position because you can't do that and have your shoulders up there. The shoulders have got to come down and it opens up this front aspect of the shoulder, which is what we need. And being into the office position. All right, guess what? We're going back to horse. And this one's called nod the head and wag the tail to calm heart fire. I wanna show you how I'm gonna place my hands like so. So the fingers are wrapping inside the thighs. So I'm going to, you wanna watch first, I'm gonna exhale over to the right leg, round myself around, like I'm sweeping the crumbs off the table, inhale up to stand, exhale, swing the body round, inhale up. So hence nodding the head and wagging the tail because as you move your head to one side, the tail is wagging to the other side. Really strong on the belly. Creating a bit of heat. I exhale over the right. I imagine I'm sweeping crumbs off the table because my back stays straight. And I come up on the left side. So keep going. Almost feel like there's a fire burning warm and steady. A little bit like the sun of the body. And when it's calm, then we're feeling in balance with ourselves. We feel kind to ourselves, kind to others. That's enough of that side. So nodding the head and wagging the tail to calm the heart fire. Again, working with the heart and small intestine. So you can give your legs a little rest by straightening them, but we've got to do it back to the other side. So let's bend the knees into horse. Exhale over the left side. Inhale up the right side. Exhale to the left. Inhale up. So we're calming our heart fire. Keeping it steady. A bit like a fire. You don't want it to overheat. You don't want it to go out. You want it to be steady. 
And when our heart fire is steady, that's when we feel calm, kind, compassionate, in balance with ourselves and with others. Sometimes the fire can get a little bit too much or too little, two more. And last one. And release, step back. So that's five. We're on to number six, which is the water element, and that's to do with the kidneys and the urinary bladder. So we're going to start with our hands on the kidneys. You know what your kidneys are just above your pelvis here. So let's just give them a little massage. Maybe make some fists. Just massage the kidneys. And just a reminder how important the kidneys are because they're really the, you know, the, the, the essential essence of our energy comes from our kidneys. We call it Jing in um, Chinese medicine, and it's given to us at birth, our essential essence or our energy storehouse. So when our kidneys are out of balance, that's when we get kidney adrenal fatigue, etc. So from the kidneys, we're gonna exhale Run the hands down the back of the legs. And then trace them around the ankles, up the inner legs, which is the kidney meridian. Inhale to reach up to heaven. And exhale. Back to lower down to end. Take them back to the kidneys. Exhale. Down the back of the legs, which is the um, urinary bladder energy line, inhale up the inner legs, hands lift up to heaven and exhale, lower down to end, inhale round to the kidneys, exhale, touching the back of the legs all the way down, inhale up the inner legs, benefits the kidneys, and the bladder, and exhale. Inhale, back round to kidneys, exhale. Inhale, up the kidney energy line, so you're in touch, and then reaching to the heavens, bringing that energy back to our center. Let's do two more. Remembering that the kidney energy is really our energy storehouse. So we want to make that energy feel replenished, especially in winter. Last one, inhale, exhale down the back of the legs. Inhale, up the inner legs, especially if you're feeling a little bit run down low on energy, which I notice a lot of people have been telling me that they feel like that at the moment. Something to do with winter. Okay, so two more to do. Um, I love this one. It gets rid of anger and frustration. And that's the um, emotion of the liver. The anger emotion is associated with the liver. So we're gonna release that anger and instead have kindness, a little bit more kindness. So you make a fist, not the fancy fist we did before, just a, a normal fist, but the thumb on the outside. And we're punching from here, okay. Now, if we're punching, there's no good punching from a straight leg. It looks ridiculous. Not only looks ridiculous, feels ridiculous, because there you've lost your power because your knees need to be bent. As we punch, we bring the hand forwards. So the first thing that's going to 
touch is the knuckle because that's going to do the damage, the knuckle. So I bring it back and I punch with the other. And I'm keeping it close into my body, into my axle, because if I take my hand out here and I punch from out there, it's not going to be strong. It's stronger coming from center. Tailbone's tucked. So again, I can feel that power coming from the um, axle, the center. So what you're going to do, you're going to focus your eyes. Your gaze is sharp. We want to increase our strength, vitality, reduce stress, and a little bit of concentration. So get your eyes focused. You can punch me if you're focusing on the picture. I do um, an exhale. I like to do it quick. If you don't want to do it that quick, it just doesn't feel as strong, does it? If we go, whoa, look at this. I'm not going to be um, aggressive because actually that's not how I want to be. We've all got anger in us. So let's get it out. And this is called punching with an angry gaze to increase strength. So if we want to increase strength, we want to give a little bit of a... But make sure that you're punching at, don't let it go out here and all over there. Up the tailbone in, let the power come from the center. Gaze at your target. Make sure that the fist comes forwards. So it's not a flailing punch, but a very directed punch directing the anger and the frustration and the stress and release. Woo. So that's the wood energy. So maybe we feel a little bit more balanced once that anger is gone. A little bit more kindness, softness. And the final one, I think we should just gather that sense of kindness because we've let go of all the frustration. Let's just gather that and bring that. Focused anger can be very positive and focus it into doing good deeds. Environmentalists are a good example of that. Let's just gather and release anything that is negative energy, unchanneled, unfocused, let that go. We can feel a little bit more balanced, a little bit more calm, a little bit more kinder to ourselves, using the liver energy and then seal that in. So that was a good place just to focus on what it is we want, what we want to let go of. And that's a really key part of our Qigong balance our emotions as well as working the body. Now, shaking the back seven times to eliminate a hundred illnesses. I'm, I'm good for that. So we're gonna inhale. We're gonna exhale. Like a balloon, I want you to just drop your hands down towards the floor. We're going to inhale, lift with a gentle back bend. And as you exhale, you just bang the heels, lift and lower the heels and let go. So again, it's quite a good release. Settles our energy to finish with. So this is the last of the silk brocades. We're going to shake the back. We'll do it seven times. We're going to shake the back seven times to eliminate 100 illnesses. Don't ask me what they are. So we inhale, open the chest, exhale, deflate yourself down to floor, let the head drop, chin into the chest. We inhale, expand back up, take a little slight back bend, and then 
Just lift and drop the heels and just let go. Inhale into the front of the body. Exhale. Sink, collapse. Inhale. We rise a little back bend and then let go. That little lift of the heels and shake. Inhale. Exhale, we collapse. Inhale, lift up with a slight back bend and just let it go. Inhale, open the chest, exhale, collapse yourself down. We inhale, lift with a gentle back bend and let go. I've lost count. Inhale, I think it's four. Exhale, we don't want to finish on four. Collapse, inhale with a gentle back bend. Let go, inhale, two more. Exhale, from the belly, from the center, from the axle of the wheel, we sink. Inhale, we grow. Gentle back bend and, and here's our last one. Inhale, open, exhale. Rolling down, inhale, rolling back up. Gentle back bend and that let go. So to finish our practice, tonight. That was the eight silk brocades, which are a very ancient practice. And the movements are supposed to have a silken quality and the energy of silk. And primarily, they're designated as a form of medical Qigong. And it's actually two and a half thousand years old. So, you know, pretty amazing that those practices have lasted and they're used extensively in China and Korea and Japan for health. So we're gonna take the dominant hand into a fist, the non-dominant hand rests over. Just settle into your wuji stance, your emptiness stance. We're gonna to bow to each other. First, we're going to bow to the masters of this from the Song Dynasty, 1100s to the 1300s, two and a half thousand years ago. And then we're going to bow to ourselves, to our parents, our parents' parents, ancestors, back to the source. And namaste, thank you very much. I'm just going to finish the recording.